So in terms of the agenda, um, I'm going to start out talking briefly about Eagle. I'm contractually obligated to. Um, I see an awful lot of friendly names, though, on the webinar, so I won't spend too much time on that. I will stop before I hand it over to Phil and Aaron and just talk briefly about why Eagle chose to partner with Cumulo. Um, then we'll get into the main presentation. Uh, Phil's going to start out with some of the high-level stuff about Cumulo. That's a great time to take a bathroom break. I'm just kidding, Phil. And then uh, Aaron's going to get into Come the Come on. <laughs> yeah, we didn't plan that. That was a surprise for Phil. And then uh, Aaron's going to get into the technology in more detail. I, I would encourage you to use the uh, Q&A capabilities to ask questions throughout. Anthony and I will uh, write them down, uh, track them. If it makes sense, we'll ask them, uh, interrupt Aaron on a particular slide. Otherwise, we'll save them for the end. We also have some uh, polls we're going to pop up on the screen any second here. Uh, really appreciate it if you'd take the time to answer them. It's going to help Eagle and Cumulo uh, understand what's important to you as we talk through this. Um, after the main presentation, yeah, there's the polls if you wouldn't mind answering them. After the presentation, uh, we're going to play a game called Cahoots. I got to tell you, I felt pretty uncool. I don't know what Cahoots is, but Phil and Anthony assure me that it's fun. It's really going to reward you folks for paying attention, and we're going to have a, a number of giveaways. Um, namely a, a high-end Roku device uh, for the folks that answer the most questions. Then we'll close out with some final thoughts and steps, and we'll get you guys back to your day. Sound good? All right. So let me get into the Eagle intro. So like I said, I see a lot of friendly names. I think you guys know who Eagle Technologies is. In a nutshell, we, we've been around for a long time. We really focus on the data center. Uh, you know, we evolved early on from a software and application group. Um, but for the last, uh, I think it's 27 years and counting, uh, we've been doing what we do now, which is really a, an integrator or value-added reseller in the data center. Uh, our areas of expertise are in servers, networking, storage, uh, DR and business continuity, uh, information and data management, protecting devices out in the edge, and more and more we help folks decide uh, when cloud or managed services are a good fit. And of course, we have some managed services as well. So. I've only got one more slide on Eagle. And if you've been working with Eagle uh, for any time, we've got a lot of customers that have been with us for 10 plus years, you understand the Eagle way, right? The first thing we do is listen. It sounds obvious, but we have an awful lot of customers that will often tell us that they wanna buy a particular solution. And we always like to slow down and understand what problem they're trying to solve, right? At that point, we take all of the research and the constant due diligence um, that we've been doing and we educate customers on what products and solutions we think are a good fit for them. Um, the part that Anthony and I love the most because we're big nerds is architecting. So we collect a ton of data, as much analytics as you'll give us about your environment. We architect a solution, blueprint it, present it back to you, make sure that you're comfortable with it. You know your environment better than we do, right? Um, and then ultimately we get to the point where we deploy. For the vast majority of our products, Eagle does the deployment. We believe that's a better path than having the vendors do it because we did all the sizing, we understand your environment, and uh, hopefully you feel really comfortable yelling at us, right, when it's not going the way you want it to. During that deployment, we do a lot of knowledge transfer. We usually plan for a third to half of the time we're out there to be knowledge transfer. Um, I haven't got the support yet, but you guys get to call us if you have problems, but we want you to feel very comfortable with the solution. As it relates to support, um, for all of our, our core products, you actually call Eagle for support. If we positioned multiple vendor products for a solution, you've got one throat to choke. And ultimately, I just think that that's a better path. And once again, if you're not getting what you want, you let me or Anthony know, you let your account executive know, and you've got a really short loop there to get what you want. And ultimately, I think the reason why uh, I was a happy customer back when I worked with Eagle on the other side and why most of our customers uh, have really had retention with us is we think this plan works, right? Um, we help you focus on a solid architecture, uh, but more importantly, what your managers, directors, and C-levels care about, which are those business outcomes. So in terms of uh, why I'm a fan of Cumulo and why Anthony's a fan of Cumulo, um, We've been seeing over the last five years a real explosion in unstructured data. More and more of our customers are struggling with how to deal with it. You know, it's not just files, it's things like video surveillance. Um, we're seeing a ton of cameras in our environments, higher video requirements, higher retention. 
Another interesting thing is access is really important. People just don't have the patience for cold data, right? They want instant access. Doesn't matter if it's a 60 day old video or a file that they edited six years ago. They want instant access, right? The other thing that we're seeing is that a lot of folks are moving to all flash storage or all flash HCI and this rapidly growing set of unstructured data for most of our customers, it's just not a good fit for that, right? It can be very costly to store that data there. So I gotta be honest, I didn't see this coming five years ago, but I would say that network attached storage is, is more relevant now than it was uh, five years ago, right? And so we're starting to see a lot of people look for a separate dedicated appliance or solution. They can live on-prem and maybe out in the cloud, right? That, that hosts these files and, and does it in a cost-effective way. So the only other thing I'll add before, uh, you know, Phil and Aaron get mad at me because I'm still in their thunder, is that a lot of folks look at object storage, but it's just a not good, it's not a good fit in this space, right? People need that instant access. They want that native file access. Um, and so we spend a lot of time doing due diligence on NAS to try to fit this void inside our product set and to have good solutions for our customers. So with that, I'm going to relinquish control of my uh, screen, hand it over to Phil and Aaron and let them get into it. Thanks, right. Brian. All right, let me get uh, this shared out. And can you guys see that screen? I can see it here, Phil. Excellent. Okay. So, you know, to Brian's point, um, NAS has been around uh, quite a long time. And if you go back to um, the mid 90s, right, kind of the early 90s iteration of the internet it was really hard to share uh, data and files um, amongst users or applications. And a company by the name of NetApp designed a, a solution that was really built off of a couple of controllers, but it allowed for easier sharing of that data. And that, and that worked and was great for a lot of entities. And there's a lot of entities that are, are still leveraging that technology. Um, in the early 2000s, um, there were a number of, uh, providers that looked at that and, and saw issues with um, the, the scale up model and they designed uh, a scale up model and the leader here was really Isilon. Um, they they uh, took a solution and based it off of x86 um, that could scale out and give you performance and capacity as you as you grew. Um, but it had limitations with, you know, small, small file count in terms of the way that it protects data. Um, this is all also the other big thing is was designed before the cloud existed and before flash became something that was, uh, available in the data center. And so the, the architecture here was, you know, is really about almost 20 years old. So a number of engineers, um, Phil, Phil, Phil real quick. Um, yeah. As, if you don't understand the difference with scale up and scale out, that's kind of their, their, their underpinnings. If you've utilized Windows file servers and you had them, um, you're presenting lens to them, putting file systems on top of things, and, and then you know, clustering those together, or network appliance type devices, et cetera, where you have a, a single brain, if you will, and just dish shelves that are attached to it, that's a scale up methodology. As you build out or you require more storage or more performance, you end up changing controllers and storage blocks to keep moving and moving. So you have multiple data migrations that occur in that place. Scale out is when we're adding compute, network, and storage all at the same time. So every time you add a node, because uh, we go into the clustering talks and start talking about nodes, you're adding capacity and performance and network throughput. So, so you're not limited to the, the performance of a, of a given server. Yeah. Everything talks distributedly to each other. I just wanted to be sure that everyone understood that, 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 that fundamental difference between scale up and scale out. Sorry, Phil. No, you're, you're fine. Great, great point. I'm glad you called that out. Um, and and what, what really happened here after this realm um, is a number of engineers looked at the cloud era, the flash data center, and they founded a company by the name of Cumulo back in 2012. Um, we are, we're unique in the fact that we're the only file system, uh, in this current era that is the exact same in the cloud as on prem. Um, so we, we do offer you that true hybrid cloud model and you can use the cloud in the right way. Um, but also have very high performance or very cost effective on prem storage as well. 
Um, and I think we've got some poll questions here that, that Anthony's going to pop up as well. Um, let me keep moving here. Okay, so I'm going to highlight um, uh, these five areas in terms of where Cumulo seems to shine in most customers' eyes. And um, as we're going through this, um, if you want to just answer those poll questions, and then we'll we'll come back to those here um, once everybody's got those answered. But if you think about uh, what it takes to provide a uh, a relevant file system today in this hybrid cloud world. Um, it, you know, I think it's, uh, I saw a stat yesterday that said about 65% of enterprise data sets are still on-prem um, and they're struggling with the idea of how to move, move those things to the cloud for entities that are looking in that direction. We are truly an enterprise proven file system. Um, we are offering multi-protocol support um, cross protocol permissions, which Aaron will go into later. Um, we are a very resilient file system uh, designed for both availability and high performance, full data services, you know, things like snapshots, quotas, replication. And we scale to billions of files. Um, and as we talk about some of the use cases, uh, this is extremely relevant. And when it comes to uh, you know, solutions that people look at today, they want choice. We're, we are truly providing a software defined approach here. Um, this is a file system that runs on x86 uh, with multiple providers of your choice. Um, we've got OEM versions with HPE and Dell. We have our own Cumulo white box solutions. And um, we also offer a, the ability to run this natively in the cloud. Uh, we're in the AWS marketplace, uh, as well as GCP and other cloud providers to come as well. So th the, uh, the idea here is that you can leverage the cloud in the right way, right? And move those workloads seamlessly between on-prem and the cloud. And um, one of the other differentiators that we bring to the table comparatively to the, the legacy providers in this space is that we're giving you real-time visibility into the data sets. So you don't have to do these, you know, day or week long, weeks long tree walks to get analysis of who's using what and when, uh, what was consumed. That's all available at your fingertips um, in real time. And it allows uh, other entities to, you know, do troubleshooting very quickly, increase performance, um, it's also a great money saver because you have uh, trends that you can you can watch within the system to understand how how fast you're consuming your capacity, what it looks like in terms of when you're going to need to um, acquire more, or how do you uh, archive some of that data or delete it and and free up capacity very quickly. And from a control standpoint, um, we provide, you know, we're an API first company. Um, we are big fans of, you know, if you're going to do a task more than once, automate it. And uh, this is this is key for integrating, um, you know, legacy applications to cloud native solutions. Um, so we, we provide a lot of simplicity when it comes to this. And the number one reason that customers choose us today is because uh, we take care of them. We partner with them. Um, we like to call it, you know, customer success instead of support. And this is this is something that is a completely different experience than the legacy providers in this space today. Um, you have the ability to communicate with us over email, phone, Slack. That you're getting a dedicated storage engineer. There's no triage. Um, so it's it's a great. Um, it is a great experience, and uh, you'll see that here a little bit later in, in some of the uh, data points that are, are, are coming up here. But where uh, a lot of times people hear that and they say, okay, well, where do you play? Where, where is Cumulo relevant? And if you look across these different use cases, um, we are we're used in many different workflows. 
So think of anything that is uh, typically, you know, rich media, uh, large capacity, uh, data that doesn't dedupe or compress very well, um, or that scales to millions, billions, um, or even more file uh, accounts like AI machine learning. So, um, you know, one of the areas where we have, have shined recently is around the explosion of video data. And I think we've got some polling questions around that as well, if you want to throw those up, Anthony. But um, the surveillance market has just exploded, and it seems like everybody is installing cameras either at their business, the school, their, uh, you know, the police and sheriff departments with uh, um, dash cams, body cams. So if, if you're struggling with uh, that growing data set around that, that realm, um, that's a, an area where we definitely shine. We also are very relevant in the life sciences, enterprise file, the genomics workloads um, in those life sciences uh, realms, and, and then healthcare from a, you know, a PACS um, or even you know, oil and gas right, those, those large, um, uh, large file uh, data sets that, that exist in those realms. So that's, that's really where we play. We're a recognized global leader here. Um, we've got, uh, you know, references around the globe. And because of what we're doing from a cloud native standpoint and taking advantage of best of breed hardware, Gartner actually moved us up again in their Magic Quadrant this, this year. We were the only leader to move up and to the right. Everybody else that was in that leader quadrant either went back or down. And um, we've got a lot of great reviews on the peer insights as well. So I'm gonna hand it over to Aaron here um, to go a little bit deeper into the technology. All right, thank you, Phil, appreciate that. I hope Phil um, didn't put everyone to sleep. So, so we'll, we'll, we'll keep talking in here and we'll move through. I'm gonna take a couple minutes to talk about the techno or technology generically at a high level. Um, we'll, we'll walk through the, the hardware platforms that we provide and our partnerships with HPE and Dell. And just so you can see, you know, we are a software company. We are truly hardware agnostic. And I say that with a little caveat, you know, we do have qualifications we want to be sure are met just to be sure that you get the performance and it, that, that we would desire and the clients want. Um, so what allows us to do that is Cumulo is software designed. We are first and foremost a flash first company. Uh, everything writes in and out of, out of Flash before it goes anywhere else, uh, but, but we are software, and that allows us to abstract ourselves from the industry technologies as new trends and, and technologies come out, i.e. new CPUs, new hard drives, you know, faster memory, faster networks, whatever it may be, we're abstracted from that. The OS handles that piece. All that Cumulo is doing, all that we're worried about is the file services and data protection. So we, we truly don't care, you know, Sandy Lake, Cascade Lake, whatever's underneath there, if it makes sense and it drives performance or value for the client, we adopt the new technology. So as I said, you know, we have three basic platforms that we have in our white box and we'll go over what those are in one moment, um, but, but we have an all NVMe. Uh, we are the only provider on the market today, back to you know, Cumulo's you know, a emerging technical leader, uh, but we're the only player on the market today that offers a multi-protocol all NVMe uh, uh, NAS device. So our, our, our NVMe cluster, the only one out there today. And that multi-protocol not only works for our all NVE, it's the same for our mixed hybrid use, for active archive, or into the cloud. Again, the only provider that does on-prem and off-prem multi-protocol file access. Um, so from a performance standpoint, as we look at here, you know, everything starts at four nodes. We have the idea of, of quorum. So we start a quorum of, of a cluster with four nodes and we grow up from there. You only have to add a single node at a time to grow your cluster. But again, the, the minimum entry point is four nodes to start the cluster and ensure we have quorum and we can protect your data. From there, all, all the, the metrics from a performance standpoint scale. You know, at four nodes, it's 18 gigabytes. At, you know, 50 nodes, it'd be 250, 230 gigabytes a second of throughput. You know, 100 nodes, 460 as we're showing here. And, and that, that number of nodes continues to go up and up. It's just what is needed by the client. So you don't have to buy you know, five petabyte today if you're planning for five years down the road or three years down the road from a depreciation cycle standpoint. You buy the capacity that you need today and you, you add as on demand as you need it. From a mixed hybrid perspective, you know, as I mentioned, and this is true for our active archive as well, 
all of our nodes have Flash on the front end. All writes land on Flash as the data cools down and is not being accessed. Those blocks are being federated to spinning disk on the back end. So you're getting Flash-like performance at hard drive type prices. For our mixed, hi our, our, our mixed hybrid, sorry, I can't talk today, and our active archive schema. Uh, the capacity scale, performance scales, uh, as you add each node. And we give you again, as Phil mentioned, the flexibility to burst into the, in, into the cloud today with AWS and GCP and in the future to Azure. Uh, uh, truly the same data set you're doing. So if you have a workflow and you needed burst computing, uh, wh whatever that may be, or if you wanted to say, hey, I've got this new application we're looking at bringing online, I'm not sure how it functions. You know, it'd be great if I could spin up a small environment and just test it out, but I don't have the resources here. You could burst out to AWS or GCP, test your application workflows against the file system and say, yeah, it worked great, and then deploy it in the data center as you need it. All right, let's go to the next slide there, please, Phil. I don't, it's not working for me, I apologize. There we go, there's, a, there's my slide. Um, the, the, the entire hardware portfolio here, what, we ha what I'm showing here is the Cumulo white box. That's gonna be comprised of everything from the QC24 over to the P184T. Uh, the QC models and the C models are all hybrid. The K is our archive, active archive mode, and the P series is our NVMe. Um, so, so again, this just breaks down, you know, what do you get in a raw capacity, a usable terabytes? And when I talk about usable capacity, that's usable based on small block files or large files. So we don't pay penalties based on uh, um, small files being in a distributed file system. We protect all of our data at the 4K block level on the hard drive and add uh, erasure encoding uh, from that perspective. And I'll talk about that. I probably jumped the gun a little bit here in a second. Um, but these are just to give you some of the performance metrics that you can look at and expect to see on the different platforms. From our third party perspective, uh, HPE, we've certified three different platforms, the, the 90 terabyte Apollo, 180 terabyte, and the 288 Apollo. So these are Apollo Gen 10 now, and so the numbers are actually gonna change a little bit. And then from a, a Dell perspective, uh, we've certified the 120 terabyte node. We are constantly working with OEMs to bring more hardware platforms uh, to, to give you more choices. Again, we are not dependent on any proprietary hardware. You know, Intel CPU or AMD CPU, we, we, we truly don't care. The underlying operating system abstracts us and we virtualize disk layers below that. If you have any questions, guys, oh, there's, there's a question in the Q&A. Um, so how are we different than the Dell VxRail? Uh, VxRail is completely uh, more of a, a, a virtualization abstraction for HCI. So you would look at that from a, a perspective of HCI for your operating systems, uh, databases. Uh, it doesn't really scale well for unstructured data. You start talking about throughputs and speeds and feeds from a, a video perspective or just general file perspective. That digital landfill and repository keeps growing and growing. And it looks like that may have been answered. I apologize. Oh, sorry. Um, uh, VxRail, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't allow you the, the, the true scale. So Cumulo is going to scale from your unstructured data perspective. We say petabytes. Yeah. Go ahead, Anthony. I was going to add to that. I was going to try to answer it um, typing. But similar concept on scale, you're, you're scaling out nodes. But with VxRail, you're also trying to run VMware on those nodes. So with Cumulo, we're using that compute to handle the unstructured data to give you high-performance NAS and other other metrics things like that so similar concept from the scale out but different workloads definitely correct if that answers your question dale and, and we can go into more depth on that here um you might see some of the, di the differences as it pops up uh, from a, a file system architecture standpoint uh, you know let's we're going to move here and and if if i had a better solutions architect from uh, eagle to, to, you know, let's, let's go to our capacity pull. This kind of pulls into the, the, the hyper-converged, hyper-infrastructure, you know, how much storage you're using. It, you know, you start talking HCI, and that, that truly is designed for uh, virtualization. It, it's not designed for unstructured data. Um, so, you know, we're, we're looking here 50 terabytes to a petabyte. You know, it's 30% it's of, of, of all of the folks that respond here have, have 200 terabytes to a petabyte of data. That, that, from an unstructured perspective, that really doesn't make sense on HCI. You're going to pay a lot more money than you have to, and your performance is going to degrade because HCI and the virtualization standpoint, the way that the blocks are handled is different. Um, 
what's more important, simplicity. Okay, um, we're gonna we're gonna talk about the hair. You're gonna see that it's very easy to to use to grow, expand. Um, and as we've talked about, we are software defined, so we're not tied to, to hardware specifically. Windows File Server. So a lot of um, a lot of traditional scale up, uh, and and again, depending on your use cases, it works great. But as that digital uh, repository and that landfill, if you will, starts to, to to grow and grow, how many Windows File Servers do you have? How many NAS devices? How many LUNs are you managing? What are your maximum file sizes that you can keep? How do you move your data around if you get hot spots? These are all problems that that, that plague the the day-to-day the -day admin and things that, that Cumulo was designed to look at and say, okay, here's how we're gonna make that a little different and better. And we're gonna, we're gonna move into that here, guys. So um, again, if you have questions, please just, just type them in the Q&A and we will, we will keep moving through those. Uh, where's my forward button? There it goes, it keeps disappearing on me. So in a nutshell, I'm, I'm keeping this pretty, pretty high level. You know, um, Cumulo's enterprise proven that the services that we offer, the services generically speaking, that have been around for, for you know, 30 years. NetApp did SMB or SIFS, if you will, in NFS. Um, our, all of our competitors have the basic services, uh, NFS, SMB, FTP. You know, what we do differently is we abstract each layer. So our data, data services, our Cumulo file system, and our block storage, everything's abstracted. So they all run in their own little container, which allows us to, to manage permissions across all the protocols. So we call that X, uh, XPP, Cross Protocol Permissioning. Uh, and it's not just SMB and NFS permissions. If you have users coming in via FTP or, or, or REST API, or you know, potentially S3 in the future, uh, whatever that protocol is that we add in, it's a different layer that does the authentication and our file services. So we map those to get those users together automatically to give you your same, same permissions, whether it's POSIX or ACLs, uh, based on your Active Directory setup uh, and, and what you're establishing there. So from a security perspective, all that's matched together. You don't have to go through and, and make a whole bunch of changes. Um, we're, we're going to take what you have and automatically apply those to all the protocols. Um, from a data services perspective, replication, snapshots, quotas, and audit, I, I think everyone's familiar with what those are. Um, if you have specific questions on those, you know, uh, please let me know. We do encrypt our, our replication traffic uh, over the wire, so from device to device over the WAN or, or, or private LAN, whatever you have there, that all that data is going to be encrypted. Uh, snapshots are a point in time, like, uh, again, we didn't reinvent the wheel. We made the wheel better by the way that we abstract the metadata so that we're not doing tree walks to find out where the data blocks are. Okay, and this is, this is really true, you know, the big thing is quotas. If you add data to a file system, you say, you know what, I, I, I really need to restrict what they're doing, and they have, they, but they already have 10 terabyte, we'll say 10 terabyte of data, but it's all 1K blocks. In order for, our, for most technologies, to enforce that quota, there is what we call a tree walk. And that's basically just going through and counting the files. It's called a LIN and, and, and adding all that up. And depending on how busy the system is, that could take you know minutes, hours, days, or weeks to, to, to finish before the quota starts getting applied. Within Cumulo, as we abstract the, the metadata, that quota gets apply, applied in real time immediately because we know where everything is at. We're not trying to guess and, and count things. We have a metadata index that's shared across the entire cluster. So all the nodes are aware of it, and, and we can immediately say, okay, well, here's your, your quota. It's been applied. Oh, you're at your quota. You're done writing. Um, call your storage guys. You know, tell them you need more storage. And, and if you're doing quotas, then you're probably looking at a showback or chargeback, which leads directly into that, and you, you can show them very easily how much they're using from a capacity standpoint. Our audit is, is an audit everything. All protocols, all API calls, everything goes out there. Uh, we send it out via syslog, so you can ingest that into Splunk or any other syslog service and, and do your reporting and metrics based on that. I mentioned the real-time queries and aggregation of metadata, so there are no tree walks. We already talked about the multi-protocol permissions that, that automatically get applied based off of the, the UID or the, the SID in the Windows environment and merging those together. Um, Things get complicated in permissions uh, just based off of authentication providers. Ideally, you have one authentication provider, uh, uh, you know, for example, Active Directory, where all of your data and all your POSIX information, if you're using POSIX or, or whatnot, is incorporated in that so that you've got, you have one single source of truth. Uh, we talked about the massively scalable. You know, we say petabytes. Uh, the file system it will actually scale into the exabytes, and we don't have file limitations as far as a single file size. A lot of our competitors have four terabytes or 16 terabytes or 100 terabyte limitations on the file setup. 
if you're doing seismic data, or just as an example, and, and you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm drilling for oil, I wanna know what's down there, and you're pulling all that data, those data blocks up, trying to break those files out can be very painful. So Qmo will, would allow you to very seamlessly just stream that file out, whether it's a terabyte, 10 terabyte, or a petabyte. That's one file still, Cumulo doesn't care, we're protecting the data blocks underneath it. And, and so large file or small file, the efficiency is the same. We mentioned, I think everything in here, um, the, the, the key here to remember is, as we deploy a Cumulo cluster, we are using the native 4K block size on all the drives. We, we create virtual disks on those drives and we, we, we store what's called P stores, which is protection of the data block and B stores, which is the data block itself based off of those, those, those virtual uh, um, drives across all the nodes. So as you go to write into a Cumulo cluster, all the, all the nodes are aware of all the P stores and B stores and the data drops straight into it. Okay, so we're not protecting at the file level, we're protecting at the block level, which allows us to very quickly rebuild data blocks. Um, whereas, you know, let's say you had a, a 12 terabyte drive and you were 90% full on it, you know, that, that would be hours to rebuild the data blocks on that drive within a Cumulo file system versus, you know, days or weeks with our competition. Any questions there, guys? Nope, okay. I had the chat thing open, just wanted to be sure. I can talk a lot. So again, if you have questions, please pop them up there uh, and, and we'll keep moving forward. Uh, I mentioned that we started at four nodes. Um, we are completely protocol driven. I don't care what your operating system is, what your application is, given that your application speaks NF, NFS, SMB, or REST API, or FTP, you can talk into a Cumulo file system. Um, so, so, you know, up here, genetic, transcoding, linear editing, video, corporate file shares, it doesn't matter, it's all about the protocol. We do talk across the LAN, uh, and those speeds would be 10, 25, 40, or 100 gigabit ethernet, depending on which node and what your performance requirements are. Uh, on the right here, what we're saying is you, you have four node Cumulo file system, let's say that you filled it up. And when I say filled it up, I truly mean you can use 100% of your, your capacity. When we tell you if you're gonna, you're gonna 100 terabytes of, of usable space, you can write to 100 terabytes of usable space. You are not going to incur files, or you're not gonna incur performance detriments because we don't have the, the, the metadata in the tree walks. That's all abstracted already. And that's really, you start talking file systems and moving data around and swapping. It's finding the data blocks and where they're at. We don't have to do that because we're already aware of all the data blocks are at. Oh, the slides are not advancing, I was just told. You don't see, does, it should be slide 16, Uni, unify workloads in a single file. Is that not what you're seeing, guys? That's what I see. That's what I see. Okay. Yeah, they're working. Okay, sorry. And, and then, uh, so, so we're on a slide, slide 17. You know, in this example, um, we, what we're looking at is we, we had that four nodes. We wrote it to 100%. Man, I'm out of capacity, what do I do? You could add a single node, two nodes. In this example, we're just showing four nodes. Uh, all you have to do is rack stack, plug them into the network, uh, and tell, them, tell, tell the Cumulo, I've got four new nodes, you add them to, to the cluster, and automatically what happens is we are going to dynamically, uh, Phil's already doing it for me, restripe the data that was on the first four nodes across all the nodes, while also allowing those net new nodes to ingest data. So we have a background ingest process that we're, we're going to rebalance the data across all the nodes that are in the cluster. Again, because we're, we're just protecting the 4K blocks. That happens on, um, on the back end, if you will. Uh, we, we have a, it, it's still the same hardware infrastructure, but it happens in the back end with no impact to the client. So if you're reading or writing files, you're still gonna be reading or writing files. You just may be writing to node seven now instead of node one, uh, vice versa, because as we add nodes, we're gonna add more IP addresses, and those IP addresses are gonna be handed out to clients via uh, DNS. So that, that's in, in a nutshell, that's, that's the scale out perspective of this, which is way, way different than the scale up. Every node we add is gonna give you your SSD, your hard drive, your CPU and your network. So everything gets plugged in all the time and, and it's a resource you're able to use. I see we have a question here. Hey Aaron, yeah, yep. we have a question about um, deduplication, which so, I know <laughs> obviously a lot of the workloads you guys are dealing with don't dedupe well to begin with. Um, you know, compressed video files, things like that. So, Correct. Um, so I'll let so, you answer it. Yep, uh, to, to Anthony's point, uh, um, most of what, what, what we've done historically doesn't dedupe. Well, we are looking at dedupe, but it is not part of the product today. Um, when we do bring it to bear, it will be uh, software based. So, so again, it, it's, it's to Phil's point, we have a subscription. So any new features we bring, the clients get for free. Um, we, we, 
talked about our agile programming methodology. And what that means is um, every two weeks, we're going to be releasing new code. And that code may have a net new feature, i.e. dedupe or compression or, I don't know, you know, if you're a Star Trek fan, you know, a transportation. I'm still waiting for that one. But, but anything that gets developed, you get for free. You don't have to upgrade your code if you don't want to. Um, you know, every two weeks or every, every quarter or, or, you know, or every year. That's up to you and what requirements you have from a, a availability slash a feature functionality standpoint. It is being looked at. It's not there today. Yeah, I, I would say it's, it's, like you said, based on the data sets that you guys typically deal with, it hasn't been high on the need. Plus, when you look at usable capacity, you just mentioned you guys can run the, or, um, the system to 100% full. Where a lot of other systems, you know, you really only get to 70, 80% full before um, issues creep up or you really, you know, performance suffers. Correct. And so some of those things already, you have some efficiency gains compared to other people that maybe they do have dedupe, but, um, you know, there's not a huge savings from it compared to that extra 20% that you guys get to use. Correct. And, and, and Anthony kind of beat me to the point on that. Um, dedupe's a lot more effective. Oh, sorry. In yeah, it's, it's awesome, but I appreciate it. You are the better solutions engineer or architect. I mean, that's, you know, Brian mentioned. Hey, I was going to say something, I mean, but Anthony wouldn't shut up. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, funny. so, so yeah, you know, it, it's not there today. Um, we are looking at it again. Um, like most things that we do as we bring it in software, uh, and we haven't talked about replication or snapshots yet, but, but we will, it, it'll be based on the directory level. So you say, I, I want to dedupe the data sets in this directory. But, but again, it's not on the boat today, I'm, and I'm not going to give you a timeline on it. Um, being that, we, that being that we can we are better from a, a capacity utilization standpoint does offset a, a big piece of that. Uh, we really see dedupe more in, in the backup versus day to day corporate file shares or or workloads. Yeah. There, there is there is a, a performance delta that you'll end up paying when you start enabling dedupe on stuff. Yeah, Aaron, if I could add one tidbit, in, in all seriousness, Anthony did a good job kind of talking through Eagle's thoughts. This was a conversation as part of our due diligence, but even if you just distill it down to the fact when we worked through your pricing and we compared, you know, your quote unquote effective against other folks' effectives, right? Um, especially taking into account how a lot of these files don't dedupe well. Um, it, you know, it's not even a dollars and cents thing with you guys. You guys are priced well with the capacity that you offer, right? So. Um, I can understand why it comes up as a hot topic, but like you said, I can see why it's not a heavy focus for Cumulo right now. Thank you. Appreciate that, Brian, very much. Um, and I'm not going to talk price because that's all Phil. He'll make it work for you. <laughs> Which backup vendors do we work with? Um, you know, that, that's, that, that's a great question. Uh, we, we've, we've done work with Rubrik. We've done work with Commvault. You know, our, our API, as Phil mentioned a little bit, is completely open and we do have a, a snap diff which will present out to the backup vendor, just the difference in the changes. Um, so we, for lack of a better term, I don't care who the backup vendor is. You know, uh, the one thing that we, we would look at is it would be file-based backups as we don't support NDMP. That, that's, kind of, that, that's the one kicker there. But again, with the snap diff, all you're backing up is the block differences in the changes that are captured in the snapshot. And we, we can definitely you know, come on site, talk more about backup vendors and, and go through that specifically if you want to there, Tim. Mm -hmm. uh, where is my there it is slide 18 we're moving forward let's see if it goes built-in data protection we kind of jumped around a bit and we talked about a couple things and, and we're gonna we're gonna drill into it a little bit more right now uh, as far as like erasure encoding and, and our data data services from a protection standpoint um, but I, I don't want to like bore everyone and glaze your eyes over and have you fall asleep on me um, that's that was Phil's job uh, so, so we do all of our data protection on erasure, via erasure encoding. And, and essentially all that is, it's a, it's a math algorithm and, a, and, and you know, an and or, uh, an XOR statement. Um, that just says, I, I have, for example, in a four node cluster, um, which a lot of times when, when you buy storage, your first day is your best day. I've got my storage on there, nothing else is on it. I'm running great, woohoo, I'm off to the races. When you buy a four node cluster with Cumulo, that is your worst day ever. Okay, um, so if you love the performance, it's awesome, it's great, but as you add nodes, your performance is just gonna get better. And we start talking about data protection, there are certain things I have to do to protect the data. Um, so, so in a four node cluster, you know, we'll have a node failure or a simultaneous drive failure, that's covered automatically. We use a six comma four, which is six blocks for everything we write in. Four of those blocks are gonna be data, and I'm gonna apply two parity blocks to that. So, so that's how we, you know, we do the hash in the algorithm. We say, okay, well, I know where my, my protection stores are that we talked about earlier, and my data stores are. 
I know what drives they reside upon. So I know I can put data blocks on these different nodes and protection blocks on, on these nodes, but different drives. And that's how we, we guarantee um, right now it's a 10,000 year mean time to data loss uh, from that perspective that your data will always be uh, intact and available. Uh, and, and again, it doesn't matter what your file size. Some of our competitors, if you, if you have files that are smaller than 128K, uh, you know, we start talking about double or triple or quadruple mirroring those. Um, we are protected at the 4K block level, which is the native block size on spinning disk. Uh, so, so we're not losing any overhead from that perspective. It, that enables you to, to use more of your storage. We, we kind of hit on this a lot. You can go to 100%. 100% metadata is abstracted. Performance will not be impacted. We have many clients that run at like 97, 98%. We're always like, yeah, would you like some more storage? I'm like, no, it's working great. We got this. We're going to delete this old data set. It's going away anyways. And we're like, dang it. But uh, it just goes to prove that the, the value of scale out with abstracting the metadata so you're not constantly running various jobs to find out where data's at. And these are some of the benefits that it provides. Um, I, I touched on a little bit because we are protecting the data blocks and, and not the abstracting the file layer above it. It allows us to very quickly rebuild drives. We have the fastest drive rebuilds in the industry. All the nodes participate in it, uh, which helps drive that. But because we're just protecting those 4K blocks and we're not looking at the actual data itself, we don't have to worry about the metadata. It's just repointing the data blocks for that metadata to where the file system uh, uh, lays the new data set out. I hope that makes sense there. We talked a, lot of, a little bit about snapshots. Nothing new in the industry. You know, they are instantaneous. They're, they're, there's no performance hit on it. Limitless. Um, and, you know, I, this is a word that, that, that scares me sometimes because I, I, I don't, you know, if, if I can have 14 quintillion files, you know, how many snapshots do I get on top of that? I, wow, that, 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 that's, it can get very scary. Uh, it's more of a management perspective, but uh, I, we have clients that have over 40 and 50,000 snapshots uh, and everything's running great. This is by far much more snapshots than any of our competitors in the market allow you to do. And it doesn't matter the size of your cluster. If you have four nodes, just take as many snapshots as you want to. It's all based on the capacity you have to handle that change rate. Um, it is very efficient because it is just the 4K block sizes of those delta changes. Uh, so, so if I have a, a one meg file and 8K changes, my snapshot is going to be 8K. Uh, and and that, that is very easily recoverable via right click, you know, uh, Windows uh, VSS Restore. Or if you're in a POSIX world, the dot snapshot directory, just pull your file back out. And, and we have a very easy way on the right-hand side, capacity trends, you know, what's my snapshots? Are they going up or down? Where's it at? Each of these, uh, you can drill down into to find out actually what files have even changed. So you go home on a Friday and you're at, you know, 37%. You come into the office on Monday and you're at 94%. You go, hey, you know, what happened? What changed? You can quickly identify that data set and drill down into a file structure that shows you where those changes were. Was it net new data? Was it snapshots? And, and you can even back it up to find out what client made the change. Yes, Anthony, I know I only have 15 minutes. I'm trying to hurry up. Dang it. Um, we're moving along. <laughs> well, we definitely got to get to Kahoot so we can give away some free stuff. My, Replication. My Replication. We can do replication <laughs> from site to site. It is, it, it's asynchronous. What happens is every minute the replication policy fires off, takes a snapshot, compares it to the last snapshot, and we replicate those, those blocks out. Um, we can replicate just the snapshot, we can, or just the, the data set, we can replicate the data and the snapshot, or we can replicate just the snapshot. And we can also change the retention policies at the target, so that, let, let's say that um, ransomware, for example, example, something hits your primary cluster and you have replicated a whole bunch of data over and it took you a month to catch this. If you have a longer retention period at your DR site, you can restore those snapshots back over and, and, and get all your files back. So you don't have to have it on the same, uh, same hardware for the, the snapshot perspective, and you don't have to have it in the same class of hardware. You could have NVM at your primary site, an archive at your secondary site, and, and still have all the data there. I'm moving along faster now. Real-time analytics. This is our ability, I mentioned a little bit, to drill down in real time. As files are written to the cluster, that metadata gets abstracted and put into the index which gives you the ability to look at not just the capacity, but file paths to find out what files are there, what's going on. Uh, by default, we have a, a 72 hour window that we show you. Here's your, your capacity changes, but you can go back and, and look at the last year. Um, and this drill also drills into, and I don't have a screenshot for this and I apologize guys, um, into a trending graph that'll show you based on the, your current level of uh, growth, 
and usage, here's when we would expect you to run out of capacity. And, and it does current, uh, and I mean, it also says, you know, based on what we saw as your max, here's where it is. So you'll see two data points. If you go back to your max data consumption, it'll be one spot. And if you go to your, keep on your, your current, it goes to another. So it gives you a, a very clear visible line of, hey, in, we're, we're growing in the next six months, I need more storage. That, that's, you know, quick and easy there. You don't have to build any charts. You don't have to do anything with that. Um, we give you a single view, IP addresses or, or host names if, they, if their DNS is set up properly and they're in there, what paths they're talking to, and this will just keep drilling down and down. So, so you, you don't have to toggle back and forth. You truly get real-time access. Um, as you're looking at the cluster, you'll see throughputs update and you'll see the past change as to what's going on. So, so at a glance visibility to, to truly show you what your users are doing and how your storage is being utilized. Um, our competitors don't have this in there. I, I don't, I, I don't want to say no one does this, but no one does this in the NAS market today. Next slide, uh, enterprise protocols. We hit on this, so I'll be really fast. It, I don't care what protocol it is, given that we support it, SMB, NFS, FTP, uh, REST, um, it, and we support FTPS, which is uh, SSL enwrapped uh, FTP. Uh, doesn't matter what the protocol is, you get the same permissions across the board for every protocol. So we preserve the ACLs. If you set up a, a, a complicated ACL schema on your Windows environment, the POSIX users, if it was multi-protocol, would have to adhere to that ACL, even though POSIX doesn't display that in the same, same manner, if that makes sense. I mean, we normally see it in the SMB and NFS world. Um, we talked about the enhanced security. You know, it's everything. Who did it? Where are they at? Uh, you know, if you have Splunk or some kind of ransomware, Veronis, et cetera, um, that, that is tracking things, you can funnel this, all the data into uh, them so they can you know send the lights off and at that point in time a quick way to stop in your rights from going to that directory structure I mean you'll see that the names and whatnot you go to the network team tell them to drop that IP or you can go to the cluster and set your, your quota as we talked about to zero and immediately it will be enforced and so at that point in time there's no more changes to that directory structure that are going on um, and we, we talked about shares a little bit shares can be you know you can have one uh, may not make sense so you could have multiple shares or multiple exports so you can control who's going into what more effectively and this helps you with your, your, any of your compliance stuff. Kind of our, our who's who's using um, uh, Cumulo. Uh, you know, I, I, I love talking about, uh, and I don't even think they're up here. I don't know if I can talk about them, but I'm going to anyways. Tesla, all their battery and all their manufacturing, all their video, what they do is they take pictures of the batteries as they're rolling down the assembly line at different times. And Panasonic's doing that for them today, as far as making the batteries. Cumulo is the backend storage that's holding all those pictures so they can do analytics across that. So, I mean, there's on cluster analytics, and then of course there's, you know, uh, application analytics to find out if the batteries are looking right. If they don't look right, they go to the bit bucket automatically, all programmatic. Um, the use cases across the board are all over the place. It's really about what are you trying to do and what value uh, do you need? And I just want to stress one last thing. Phil hit it a little bit about our customer success. Our NPS scores are the highest in the storage industry. I love Amazon. I, Amazon support is awesome. We're 10 points a hot, higher than Amazon is from a support perspective. 100% of, of Cumulo review, people that, that reviewed it said, yeah, I would recommend Cumulo to, to, to their colleagues.